Hey guys, Harf here, and welcome to the test pilot. Today's entry is from Yo Mama's Minecraft. Thank you very much for the submission. And your ship today is Munitar V, I believe. Let's get into our universe and launch the Munitar V. Where are you? Right here, Munitar V1. Let's take a look at this ship. Of course, this is a first impressions video. This is the series in which I take viewer submitted ships, test them out, and then hopefully make some improvements to them. And that looks like a decent ship. Very nice. Now, with my previous test pilot, I made a mistake of not actually looking through the staging, so I think I'll do that beforehand. However, first and foremost, we shall launch in the daytime. Why does it always end up being night when I start these videos? Why does it always end up being night? There we are, beautiful sunrise. So we have... Hmm, interesting design. We seem to have some sort of landing engines on the side here. Landing or takeoff, I'm not sure which, or maybe both. Um, but yeah, pretty solid. There's not an awful lot I can stay about this. We start off with our big engine and the three aero spikes and the three boosters, which is a good, very strong amount. Very, very high thrust. Then we decouple after that. The launch clamps are on the correct stage, which is very useful to know. Decouple after that, we presumably drop those aero spike stage. Continue, and we actually have a second amount of boosters. Are they Sepatrons? Yeah, they're Sepatrons to push this bit away at the same time. Okay, seems like a good application for them, certainly. So Sepatrons push away this remaining stage after this has ended. Then we decouple, and we have the three oh, okay we start off with these three tanks now that would to me be just before landing and then we initiate that engine and then we decouple those tanks and then we decouple that where's the parachute that's what i want to know where is parachute is really really early on or something Parachute here by any chance? Can't see it. Or is it one of those empty icons? Because for some reason, those icons have no name. This isn't modded, is it? Something I want to draw attention to is the fact that we do... That I can't have mods on this ship. Or mods on the series, unless I'm forewarned. Hmm. Oh well, let's trust in them. Firing in three, two, one, and we have liftoff. Extremely fast takeoff, as I said, as I said, and I'm. This is extremely, extremely positive. There's not an awful lot. I don't think I even need to change this, to be honest. You know what? Unless anything performs spectacularly bad, I'm not going to change this ship. God, I'm stuttering a bit today. Excuse me for that because I don't have an awful lot of time to record this video. I'm actually about to record Killing Floor with some friends over at Infinity Inc. Gaming. There we are, drop the boosters, and we are nearly still accelerating, almost. Can we actually see some fuel levels? There we go. What tanks are we on? We're on the last tanks now. Nope, we've actually completely run out, so let's drop that. Oh, okay, so the Septrons go then in order to push us away from those aerospikes. That is a good application of them. And we're still accelerating just off this one engine. We have three tanks of fuel to get through, which is certainly very good. Alright, looking good. We can start tilting over. Actually a tiny bit late on that, but that's no worry. Just enough. Now this is called the Moonitar V1, and so we'll probably be taking it to the moon. I do want to do some Minmus ships soon. The problem with, um, well it's not really a problem, but if you have a ship that goes to the moon, then you can just take it to Minmus and it still works. But it would be nice if we have some ships that are clearly intended for Minmus. Maybe, maybe some space planes. How about some orbital space planes that can get to Minmus? That is something that I quite like to see. If you want to submit a ship for the Kerbal Space Program Test Pilot series, then what you are going to need to do is you need to send me either a personal message containing a download link for your ship, or you can send me an email to hockgaming at live.co.uk. 
That's hockgaming at live.co.uk. You can send an email to that address with your ship either attached, or you can again send an, a link to a download for it. We are getting some pretty good altitude. Let's take a look at the map view. Pretty high. I'm probably tilted over a bit too much, but I'm okay. I'm going to keep it... Actually, I'll go up a bit more. Just keep it there, and we run out, and we decouple. There we go, and we initiate... Oh, crap. Wow, this is spinning really wildly. What on earth is going on here? Come on. Initiate those engines. There we go. Now we are... Increasing speed, certainly. By hardly any, though. Hmm, not sure if I really like that, actually. Huh, you know what, we'll go with it. Are they taking fuel? No, they're not. I'm going to initiate this engine as well. Seems like a good idea. Okay, we are... We are speeding up fast enough to get into a stable orbit, so that's good. Just as long as we keep this angle. And we're basically out of the atmosphere, so that's not really a worry. Um, yeah, I suppose, I don't know whether these tanks are just a little extra force giving. I'm not sure if this is moon capable or not. It probably will be, to be honest. Yeah, it's looking like it will be. Um, we'll just give it a 75 meter orbit. Just 75 kilometer orbit. 75 meter orbit. Wow, think how fast you'd have to be going in that term. Okay, so we can warp out of the atmosphere soon enough. Just taking it at two times speed, being pretty steady. There we go. We get up to our 75 kilometer apoapsis, and with nine seconds left to go, we shall continue burning. How are we doing? We want to be pointing a bit more upwards, I think. Just a bit more. There we go. Making some good speed, I think. Making some good speed. It's an interesting design, I have to say. Having three outside engines up here, plus this central engine, and the fact that they're all using uh, using the LV909, LV909 tech is interesting, to say the least. We have now actually finished with those, so we can drop them. There we go. Drop some dead weight there. And I guess we shall see if I can get this to land on the moon and return. Returning is always a good thing to have, you know. Kerbal pilots appreciate being able to see their family again after going on such an important mission, but it could be called successful, sex, successful if we just get them there in the first place, certainly. There we are, 76 and 75, that's good enough for me. Where is the moon? Is it above us? Is it behind us? There's the debris. Okay, we should be coming up to the moon pretty shortly then. Yep, pretty shortly indeed. Let's warp. Forgot to do a thumbnail for this, didn't I? <laughs> Actually, don't want to warp too fast in case I miss it. Come on. Where are you, moon? I know you'll be here soon. There we go. Right. And pointing prograde once more, we have the very sh simple ship left. And I'm getting messaged on Steam. No, thank you. Please go away. Um, what do I want to make about this? I'm being really distracted by that Steam message. Ah, need to go on busy mode. So we have six landing legs. Six landing legs. That's maybe a bit too much. I'm not sure. Something to maybe look into removing them. Let me quickly pause the game and set my steam to do not disturb. There we go. And we're still burning, making some pretty good speed. We can actually use physics warp just to increase this now. There we go, making it a bit quicker. It does take a while. How is our fuel tank? We only have half fuel left as well. Hmm, not looking brilliant at the moment. 
let's get an encounter and let me find out where the bright side of the moon is. It's actually facing Kerbin currently. That's a good thing, we can have this trajectory, that is no problem. Let's continue warping. Just to get up to the moon and land on it. This is a good time to talk about a suggestion I've had from Twilight's favourite Quill, who you may or may not remember is actually the first person, the first ship that entered the series and did actually start this series as a whole. Okay, that's coming down pretty quickly. We want to burn retrograde. Yeah, he did actually plant the seeds for this series. So, he has yet another suggestion, which I fully agree with. In 0.18, you may or may not be aware that docking is going to be implemented. And so, together, you, I, and the subscribers, the rest of the subscribers, hopefully you are a subscriber, we're going to make the ISSS, which is similar to the ISS, except it's the International Subscriber Space Station, which is a pretty cool name. So what we're going to do is that each week I am going to ask you guys to build me a certain module, module for this space station. So, the start week, it may well be some sort of middle connector for all the other modules to connect to. Although that spot has actually been reserved for Twilight's favourite quill, I've decided. He can have that privilege. So after that, it might likely be something like life support system, or maybe fuel reserves, something. It could be anything. I'll probably have to go away and do some thinking about that. But I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that as soon as 0 .18, is, 0 0.18 is out, we have the chance to do this. Let's see if we can make some massive, freakishly big space station, eh? We will probably be doing it on a weekly basis, just because I don't have the time. I am struggling with time at the moment. I probably won't have the time to do it any more regularly than that, and maintain my other series. So, keep an eye out, and I'll probably update you guys more on it in the future. Warping down onto the moon, just want to... We should probably actually start burning now. I mean, seriously burning, getting our speed really, really far down. Because this engine isn't particularly strong. Ooh, we are going very fast. Come on, come on ship, you can do this. Yeah, easily, easily. Alright, bringing down the throttle slightly. Just want to drop slowly but steadily. There we go. And let me actually point this more upright. Actually, no, we should just keep it exactly retrograde. Come on. It's slightly hard to pilot, but it's no real big deal. There we go. Past and under 55 meters per second, and we're coming in fast. I say coming in fast, we're coming in at under 55 meters per second. Why did I say that? Just trying to make filler. That's all I do. I am mildly good at this game. I talk about my vast knowledge, <laughs> potentially vast knowledge of it, and in the in between the useful remarks I make, I just talk filler to try and keep you guys desperately entertained because that is my job. That's my job here. And that's what I'm here to do to entertain you guys and hopefully help you in the Kerbal Space Program. Okay, final approach. Want to bring down our speed significantly now. There we go. Just slowly dropping down. How far above the surface are we? <sighs> that was weird. How far above the surface are we? We shall find out soon when we touch it. And there we go. Oh wow. That was a lot quicker than I expected. <laughs> that, was, that wasn't a particularly good landing. Apologies, although they seem to be smiling, so it didn't really affect them all that much. We have a significant amount of fuel left. You know what, we don't need to get out on the surface, because we are going to return this back to Kerbin, and we shall do so immediately to try and keep the video length down. Let's do this, where are we? Okay, we need to get into a semi-orbit at least, in order to get over to the correct side of the moon. So we can do that now, burning up, retracting those landing legs. And we need to burn towards 90 degrees. Just getting it over about... Oh, not pointing down. There we go. Alright. This is going good enough so far. 
we need to be pretty much underneath Kerbin. So if we zoom out, we see that Kerbin is just there. Which means we want our apoapsis to be just there. Perfect. Right, now we can warp up to the apoapsis. How much fuel? Ooh, not that much. We shall wait and see. There we are, just at the apoapsis. And we are ready to burn, there we go. Alright, let's see how we're doing. We do have a stronger engine than the LV-909. And it is just as efficient, I believe. But can we make this tiny speck of fuel work? Oh, it's coming down. The periaps is, is dipping. No! Ah, oh, we've just ran out of fuel. That is ridiculous. So close. This is just like our previous video. So close to returning. God damn it. Ah, oh, so close. Really, really close. Okay, guys, this is a perfect time in which to finish my conclusion. I'm not going to edit this because I think it is pretty good, but evidently it does need a little bit of work. I mean, I'm sure in the perfect mission circumstances it could successfully return the crew to Earth. The problem with it is that it didn't work and nothing majorly went wrong in today's flight. So there's not that much, uh, what's the word for it? variability. We have to get everything perfect in order for it to work and it's a surprisingly small ship so it's good that it can get this far. With just a little tweaking it can probably get further. Tweaking such as, off the top of my head, the removal of three of those landing legs or even just two definitely reduces some weight. We don't really need six to land I don't think. Um, what else? Perhaps a bit more fuel on those additional stages to help us get into orbit, that ad those additional three LV-909 engines. Maybe a little more fuel there might help somewhat. But other than that, I can't think immediately what we could do. So guys, if you want to submit a ship for the test pilot, as I've said previously, you need to either send me a personal message with a download link to your ship, or you need to send me an email either with the ship attached or again with a download link. Other than that, I've got nothing to really say, so thank you all very much for watching this video. If you liked the video, then please do like the video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.